Welcome to the Herland Report, uh, uh, expert in clinical psychology and organization psychology, Einar Salvesen. You are a Norwegian, and we know that the Norwegian Child Protecting Services have uh, been under extreme scrutiny from the international environment uh, for quite some time now, and you are the founder and the head of uh, and leading the opposition in Norway, uh, asking for a complete renewal of that system uh, that in your view has turned into a totalitarian structure that is not protecting the children and the parents and the families any longer. Uh, and you've done extensive work pertaining to this. And we are very happy to have you here because we've seen recently the BBC documentary that came out also, uh, one in many now all over Europe criticizing uh, the Norwegian Child Protecting Services. And the BBC documentary clearly showed that uh, uh, an appointed expert witness had for 30 years been a pedophile and still the guy had been involved and been protected by the Norwegian state mm -hmm. uh, in his rulings. And, and it's, it's just horrifying stories. And at the same time, we see the Norwegian state responding and saying that there is nothing wrong here. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yes. <coughs> Uh, just a comment on that particular case then. Uh, the thing is that uh, we don't know the quality of his work, if he's a pedophile or not. We don't know exactly the quality of his work, but you might say that, uh, that we lose confidence in a person like that, and of course he would get no new assignments. Uh, and, and then one, one might ask why don't they want to do inquiries and what he has done? because he would never have got those jobs if he knew his uh, personal problem, you know, with these things, to be a pedophile, of course. And, and the, but the criticism about that BBC program uh, runs like this, that the, the, the journalist doesn't know both sides. He has only one side. I happen to be in that case. I happen to be with the mother in the, in the child protection office, etc. And I can say in general terms that what uh, BBC describes we can see in a number of cases the same thing. So, so we don't need this case to see that these things happen. That might be right or wrong. I don't need to comment on that. But the point is that all what he described we can see in an in a unknown number of cases. And uh, you describe our system and I'm, I, I'm, I'm afraid you're right. But it doesn't uh, apply to all the system. There are four, 500 offices or something like that in Norway. And it, uh, these cases are what happens in the, each case is very dependent upon what kind of quality that uh, uh, office has, you know, uh, depending culture, people working there, etc. And uh, some offices are probably working fine. I have no doubt about that, actually. But there are offices, and we don't know how many, who are completely dysfunctional, who are totalitarian, and which are, create a system of evil. And uh, that applies also to the court, because it seems that they support each other. I have no other explanation. The, uh, uh, so we are in a situation where there is a number of cases, we don't know how many, where there are uh, failures all the way from the, 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 the case starts in the child protection office and through the, all the levels in the court system. It's like the, uh, if there is one error in the bottom, that follows the case. If, for example, the mother has a diagnosis, who tells her that she has a personality disturbance, which implies that she cannot uh, be with her children in a good way. And then uh, this uh, uh, diagnosis follows the case through the, all the levels, in spite of several uh, uh, several um, professionals uh, testifying that the mother don't have this diagnosis. So it's very difficult to, to change the, the court in the right direction. So, yes? And corresponding as well when we see uh, the ministers uh, recently, Helleland, who is responsible for, for the child uh, care uh, in Norway on, on a department level, 
uh, coming up and just really basically saying, no, we have no problems in Norway, there is nothing wrong with anything here. Uh, and you recently spoke with the previous uh, uh, minister as well, uh, Madame Horn, and uh, she said the exact opposite. So even on that level, there seems to be strong instructions, I guess, from the prime minister. Oh, yes. Let's just shut it all down so we won't have a crisis here. Yeah. But, it, but the question is, how long uh, is Norway willing to uh, protect the, those kinds of leaders that have brought the child protective services up to this degree of tragedy instead of being willing to open this up, remove those who have been responsible for this kind of development yeah. uh, and, and, and clean up in the system, uh, uh, you know, and, and, and help the children and respect the parents instead of what we're seeing today. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, it's, uh, it's, it's rather unbelievable for me to see that the government is not uh, doing the right steps, you know, and not even willing to go into and see if we are right or not. I mean, that's, that would be an easy thing, actually. I remember uh, we had a big meeting with uh, which actually f the former minister, which I think really wanted to make a change, but even she wasn't able to it, and I think the prime minister had a role in that. I know that the embassies are instructed to, to present the Norwegian Barnvern as, uh, as uh, efficient and very good, actually, in, in, in front and something which other, other, other nations can learn from. That was the minister said in the newspaper some days ago, actually, too, uh, that, that uh, we, are, we are the future and, and other people should, we look, we should look to us, etc. We should export oversight protection system, etc., etc. And no willingness to look at uh, what goes wrong. Of course, there might be good things in our system, but uh, what about all the cases, and we don't know how many, which we certainly ha are not uh, uh, founded on a good practice. And so children are taken away. A number of children we know are taken away, and they shouldn't have been taken away from the parents. And they don't only lose their parents, they lose all the network because of the system. There might be a good uh, grandfather or grandmother there, they don't have any contact with them anymore, etc., etc. We see too many cases like that. We are too many experts who have seen this, which shows that there is a great number. In uh, 2015, we, made an, uh, we wrote a notice of concern to the government. Some uh, professionals com came together and, uh, and uh, we wrote this uh, notice of concern. And, and we have 268 uh, professionals who know details of what's happening in the system who signed it. And you should think that was enough to start something, but it isn't. And then I wonder, why are they so keen on not learning what they should do different? Because if they had been willing to go into this and to go into the cases where we see all the failures. Uh, uh, like if, you, if, a, if a fly, if a ship sinks or, 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 or uh, you have an accident with an aeroplane, you, you observe and assess that aeroplane and are willing to do that and to learn. Why are they not doing that with the, in, in the child protection system? To select a number of cases and then you can see what's, what's uh, what's going wrong, because it's the same mistakes all, all, all the way. There are classic mistakes, maybe 20 mistakes. If you can get um, hold of them, you can see what you can do. And of course, we are proposed, uh, we are now an organization of, of, of people who has come together, who knows, uh, who are expert witnesses. We know details of the case. We sit in the court, etc., follow the case. And, 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 uh, and uh, we have suggested they should do this, but they don't, they're not doing it. Why? It's very interesting. Why don't they want to learn? Why don't they want to, 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 to see what part of the system are not working? I guess people of power are protecting other people of power and uh, at the expense of the families and the children in the, in the Norwegian Child Care Protective Services because you cannot be a minister in this country and not know what goes on. You cannot be a prime minister and not know what's going on all over the media in this country is flooding story upon stories and stories upon stories. There are groups in the western part of Norway that reacted so harshly because I believe it was a Christian family yes. that were taken, children were taken from them oh, because yeah. 
There was a question of, uh, you know, you shouldn't pray with your children. You know the details in this. And, and, and due to their religious background and the whole Christian community in the western part of Norway stood up for this family. And uh, the family, I think, fled to some country Germany. in Eastern, Eastern Europe. Often so it's, a, yes. it's a, the, the, and, uh, so I mean, there's, and, and we could mention so many cases inside of Norway that you guys at your uh, national organization, KIB, is working uh, for uh, at the moment. Uh, and also when we then add all the information coming from the whole of Europe, really. I mean, look at Poland, look at Romania, mm -hmm. look at these different nations mm -hmm. that are applying and, you know, on, on national level, prime minister to prime minister of Norway to have cases solved uh, with all this kind of, of information. Uh, it is very strange that mm. nothing is being done in Norway. Mm. Yes, it is very strange and uh, I've never experienced anything like that before and I'm asking myself why. And I think you have answered it. And uh, I, 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 it, it's like in my backbone and I think that's typical for Norwegians, we have trust in the state. We grew up with a state which we trusted. We trust government, we trust it, we have good government. I don't think people feel like that anymore. And after this, I certainly don't feel it. I don't trust the court system anymore. I don't trust the government, etc., etc. And that's a completely new thing for me. And that also applies to my colleagues. We, ha we are so disappointed. So, I mean, we are, flab we, we are, we are desperate. It's, it's a nightmare. We li live in a, a dream country and, and it's a nightmare inside it which nobody wants to look at, only a few of us. And, and, and people don't believe it before they have experienced it themselves. So many persons I have met who says that, well, I couldn't believe it. Journalists, uh, victims, uh, psychologists, colleagues, etc. Uh, and then they will say, I would never dream it could be like that. I always thought that there must be a reason. And even if I read the newspapers, I would think, well, there is a reason. It's because the, the, it's confidence around these cases, so they don't know everything. Of course, we, they do a good job. We believe that. And, and, and then, then we see the practice is something else, and you can ask why. And, uh, well, there are explanations for that. Yes, because yeah. that be then becomes the question, who is protecting who here? Mm -hmm. And how can we have, which is not really a question, because we know even from the time of Germany uh, during the war and prior to the Second World War, mm -hmm. uh, Hannah Arendt, the philosopher, studied yes. the origins of totalitarianism mm -hmm. and how splendidly, precisely, total totalitarian trends work in democracies. Because in democracies, you have the strong institutions. And, you know, I mean, it, that's precisely the environment out of which grew the Nazi system to begin with. So, so, so there are structures in the European culture, let's say, uh, you know, and, 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 and power structures within that that is able to grow precisely in a democracy. So this, this is no news. Uh, but, but how could such a, a monster, to put it that way, grow within the Norwegian state? Because there's been a problem for many, many years. Even I worked in the child protective services for many years ago. Mm -hmm. And even at that time, it was dire, dire problems mm -hmm. with the leadership uh, and the leadership consolidating their power in such a mm -hmm. way that mm, the employees do not dare to speak up against. It's like they're avoiding criticism at all costs. Yes, that's true. Well, I think uh, there are some keywords here, incompetence and a law which is very strict concerning that with every child should have the opportunity to have good qu quality, gr grow up in a good uh, uh, care, you know. And uh, then we have a socialistic background which want to provide this for families. I mean, they have more respect for what the government can do than what the family can do, in a way. Uh, so there, there is already some socialist background, I think, which makes us, and we have a lot of money not the least. We have a lot of money to put into this. So we make, we make a very strict law so that we could help children. There should be no violence, for example, it says in the law. And, and then you, you build up these offices. Uh, but the people are not competent to do this. They don't have the, you know, 
the ability to treat people in the right way so that they can see what's happening in the home because then you have to be able to create confidence, cooperation, etc. to see what's happening. So you cannot really assess what's going on and, and, and then you make fa false assumptions and then you have the law who says that you should, there should be no violence. So like it happened in this case you mentioned, uh, they were in a stress situation so the father had used force. He had said that at once, he didn't hide it. Not hard force. I don't remember, he had, uh, what do you say, he had... Uh, Shaken the child. Yeah, something like that. There was no marks, nothing. Uh, he said to me, because he, they came to me, he said to me that, well, you see that I, that I was uh, using physical force. That is not what I feel bad about. I feel bad about that I didn't have time to give them attention because they were used to that and they were so frustrated because I, I didn't have time to give them attention because they were building a house, etc., etc. So that was his concern. But uh, the, the officer concern was that he had shaken the children and, and then uh, the, the children reported it in school and then it went on and they picked up the child, even a, a three-month-old baby they took away from the mother's breast for that reason. And I say, why did they do that? Well, it's because the, 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 the head in the child protection office is responsible that he should intervene when he gets a, a notice of concern from the school. And, and, and they, have, they, 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 they say then in order to provide evidence, they have to take the children out. That's one of the classics. In order to provide evidence, they have to take the children out. Instead of entering into the family with supervision and see what's happening. But they are not competent to do that, so they make that solution. It would be cheaper, there could be three people there on, on, on uh, 24 hours, and, and it would be cheaper than what they are doing. So why are they taking these stupid decisions to take the children out and remove them? And, and, and the only way I can explain it is because they are not able to create a good dialogue process in the family. And, and you can't use people in the, those positions, you can't do that. That's actual, that's a, that's a, that should be the foundation. And, and, uh, and uh, that's an example, and then it starts to roll, and then they defend their decision, etc., etc. Uh, happily, this family came to me. I, what I could do for them was to provide uh, expert witnesses, the right expert witnesses. That's very important. If we didn't have got these expert witnesses, the case would have had another direction. They wouldn't have won the case. So it is not, we are not objective. The, the expert witnesses, they are very different in quality. So I got, uh, we, uh, the court accepted the expert witnesses, which were, uh, you know, good for this situation. And they won the case, but they didn't stop there because then the child protection office wanted to supervise them because it must be a difficult time when the children are coming back to them. And of course they didn't want to have anything with them to do, but they wrote a very polite and very good letter, which uh, you should, I can give it to you very beautiful letter, asking for having a person they could trust because they didn't trust the person who Barnumano wanted to put in their home because he was part of the, what they had experienced, uh, the lying which they had done in the court. And they had been lying in the court according to the parents. And, and they didn't trust her and they wanted another one. And I, I called the office and suggested a good person which they could use, which is an expert, and, 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 and the, the child protection office says, no, no, we want to have other person in there. And then you might ask yourself, what is that? It's stupid. They could have sold it. They're not interested to solve it. Why do they have this Nazi approach, as you say, this totalitarian approach? And, and you've been saying, too, that when you're government... And then they left the country. Then they left the they country. They had won the case, they left the country. Because the question also is, uh, as you pointed out, that uh, how come when the government appoints an expert witness, mm -hmm. that person has a complete other authority than rather when the parents appoint yes. an expert witness. That also speaks for the power of the state. Well, this is my experience because I have had both roles. And of course, I do exactly the same job. If I have um, uh, the family who pays me, they usually pay much less than the state, so it's no money in it, and not at all. It's rather a kind of idealism, or, or you find it so horrible what's happening, so you feel that you have to do it. And some of my colleagues do, have done the same. But of course, we prefer to be appointed. Why? Because then we can get well paid. That's one reason. But the other reason is that then we are listened to. 
and then we are listening to maybe too much. I mean, we, are, we have a very, very, nobody has that definition power in the court system than when you are appointed uh, expert witness. At, le at least it was like that before I started to write my articles, mm -hmm. to put it like that, because then I analyzed what, how, how badly this, this, uh, this, um, way, this expert witnesses might, uh, might um, be. And then we have another case, because we've had cases from both Romania and Poland, and you know, and the Celia case. Can you explain uh, uh, about that, please? That's because very interesting. It's an interesting because we seem to see a trend now mm -hmm. uh, of asylum seekers yes. seeking to go from Norway and mm -hmm. seek asylum in Poland and other nations yes. due to them being having the problems with the child protecting services here. Yeah. Uh, let me take uh, comment on that first. It's worse than that because people are. Uh, are going to different uh, communes, different uh, regions in Norway, actually. So let me just take that example before I take Silly's example. People, we had a case in Trondheim, Trondheim Barnevern, tr uh, Child Protection Office in Trondheim, uh, north of Norway, in the middle of Norway, and they, it was four or five children uh, involved, and they started to take her children. She ran away to Sweden with the rest of the children. And then the Norwegian barnman sent them a letter of concern to the Swedish uh, office and they make an uh, 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 investigation and they find out that the mother functions very well. So the mother goes to Horten, which is another region in Norway, because her parents live there. And then the Trondheim barnman sends a notice of concern there. And then they start a case, open a case, and they say, no, this, you functions fine, no problem. And then she says, she asks, well, do you think I can go back to Trondheim then because the school is there, etc.? And I say, yes, we think so, why not? Of course. She gets back to Trondheim and the child protection system in the office takes the children. And that's so visible. And nobody do anything. I mean, then the government, then some higher up should come in and say, what are, what's happening here? They have, diff in so serious cases, they have different practice. They have different measure for what is good care. And, and uh, happily today, recently, she won all her children back. So that something is happening, which is good too, in, in, the, in one, of the court, one of the higher court levels. She won the children back, but we have worked like hell for years to help this mother. She's a beautiful person. It's all a terrible mistake. That was uh, one answer. Silje, Silje Garmo, interesting. Uh, she came to me, she, the Barnevarne wanted to observe her. Okay, that's fine, they want to observe her. But she felt so little uh, help, she felt so little confidence in that place where she should be observed, Aline Spebarn Center. So the, the, she felt very little confidence. I don't believe that has something with her to do. I think that has with the system to do, because I have been there myself, I have been in meetings with them, I see how they treat persons, and I say, they, don't, are, they are not able to create this confidence. They are not competent, anyway. She comes to me, she comes to me, and I say, well, can you accept to be supervised or assessed? Yeah, that's no problem. And by the way, I observed, she brought her little side, and observed a really beautiful relationship between the child and her. There might be other things with her, which I didn't know about, but what I saw between her and the child, I would immediately say, whatever she does, if she drugs herself or whatever, the child should lose that mother, then we have to use resources on that mother, not take that child away. That is evident for a normal person. You, all of you would feel the same, I'm sure. Every, if you're not a psychopath, you would feel that. And that tells something about how the system works. Uh, it's not that uh, there are psychopaths who are working, but they become psychopathic in that system, I think. In some of that system. Anyway, uh, so I asked, yeah, I, I can accept to be assessed, but then I want to have uh, it from a person I trust. And then I ask her, call the child protection office, and they say, no, we have to use our people. Then I discussed with Silly again, and she could accept that if she could bring another person, which she could, uh, a professional, which she could uh, trust. I called back to Frogne Barnevern, Frogne the child protection office, and I say, no, I should stop, uh, stop uh, dealing with this case, she says to, they say to me. So I write a letter of concern to Frogne Barnevern, where I describe their uh, attitude, and again ask that they can, we can solve this in a sensible way. What you do now is to force her to escape. 
because I will, if you are not agreeing to this, I will, I, I will advise her to do that, which I did. And then Frogner Barnabarn uh, asked me not to intrude anymore, and you can have these answers, and you can have my notice of concern. I mean, this shows a level of uh, incompetence, which is incredible, I think. It's so easy to... So we discuss, and then she goes to Poland. And of course they help her. I, I talked with the Polish embassy, and uh, they can't say di directly that they, dis that they uh, take care of her, because I was afraid there should come some uh, 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 from above, from the department level, and they could come down and take her, but uh, they assured me that uh, that wouldn't happen. And the police were around her, they said, and they, the Polish people will take care of her, etc. So it's so gone to the degree in Norway with the uh, Norwegian Child Protecting Service that Norwegians and foreigners living in Norway actually flee from Norway oh, yes. and seek asylum in other countries. Oh, yes. And all the while, we see our own ministers, such as Helleland, at the moment, uh, brushing off every sort of criticism mm -hmm. from the BBC, from the international media, in order to protect maybe some of those who should have been removed a long time ago, yes. who are the heads of the Child Protecting Services in Norway at the moment. Uh, I would like to thank you very much for participating in this program and addressing these dire issues that are just um, maybe some of the most um, totalitarian stories we've heard and systems that we've seen in Norway since World War II. And thank you very much for addressing that. And uh, we hope for the Norwegian Child Protecting Service to take care of these issues and remove the current leadership so that we can reinstate the respect for the children and the parents in Norway. Thank you very much, Einar Salvesen. And thank you to you too, really. It's very important what you're doing.